So one of the reasons we use PowerShell is because it gives us the ability to create scripts. And basically a script is just a text file with a series of commands that PowerShell executes in sequence. Let me show you one real quick. I'm going to do set location c colon backslash scripts. And then I'm going to do a get child item. If I can type one of the reasons alias is, is beneficial. And I can see all of my scripts. Now I've got some CSV files. These are not scripts here. These are comma separated variable files. Dot PS1, this indicates that it is a script. Okay, let me show you an example of a script. Uh, I'm going to do a, and I'm going to use a command called get content which will show you the content of whatever file you want to look at. So I'm going to get content, get local access.ps1, and it will show me the content of that. And you'll see here it's a list of commands. And these are just straight text files. So I can do notepad, get local access.ps1, and you'll see it open up in notepad. Now, if you don't understand all of this, don't worry that's not important right now. What I do want you to see is uh, I'm going to do a there we go. I'm going to show you the content of the get service type. So I'm going to do a get content get service type dot ps1. And there it is. It's basically a one line script. Now I will kind of like the output of this. One of the when we start scripting, see if I can form a complete sentence here. When we start scripting, normally our scripts are one line scripts. And it's because we get a command that we really like and we've strung a bunch of things together, right? So get service is my first command, let where object is my second, sort object is my third, format table. So I'm strung, you know, four, well, counting more, five commandlets together here. That's going to be a lot of typing. If I really like this and I want to run this every so often, I don't want to have to type the whole thing in every time, so I write a script. And normally, when we start scripting, it's something like this. It's a one-line script. Now, that's what a script is. Don't worry about it if you don't understand what this is about. That's not the point of this video. Um, I want to execute the script. So, there's a couple of things here, and this is not a bug, this is a security feature. If I type the command get service type and hit enter, it won't execute. If we read this, it says the term get service type is not recognized as the name of command let function script file or operating system. Well, that's weird because it says it doesn't recognize it as a script file, but there it is. Unless I typoed it. So it says check the spelling name or if the path was included, verify the path is correct and try again. But if you look down here, there's more information. It's like the command get service type was not found. Oh, but look at this. It does exist in the current location. So it did see it there. That's why it's helpful to read the whole message. It did see it there, but... Here's your key. Windows PowerShell does not load commands from the current location by default. In other words, you have to specify the path. And it actually tells you right here, this is how you do it. Type period backslash get service type. So that tells me it's my path, my current location. That's what the period backslash is. Get service type and it executes my script. So the thing I want you to see here is that PowerShell does not let you run a script just by typing the script name and hit enter. You have to specify the path. Same thing, by the way, works in um, in the GUI. So if I open up File Explorer and I go to my C drive scripts and I find my get service type and I double click on it, it actually doesn't execute it. It opens it up in Notepad. If I right click on it, now I have the option to run with PowerShell. And this will open up PowerShell in a new window where you couldn't see it, and then executes the script. The idea here is they don't want you to just be able to double click and execute something. And it's, imagine a scenario where 
somebody nefarious sends a PowerShell script that would do damage to your system, and they convince the user, you know, just download this file, double click on it, and it'll be fine, and they end up screwing up their system or worse. So that's why they do that. Now, the other thing that you may run into is you may run into a scenario where the script doesn't execute because of a script execution policy. So let's talk about what that is for a minute. A script execution policy determines how scripts are executed or if they're executed at all. So I'm going to do get execution policy. And this will tell me what my execution policy is. So currently it's unrestricted. Now, the other thing, which is we're going to get execution policy list. So execution policies can be set at different scopes. So this shows me the current active execution policy. It's unrestricted. That's because it's the machine policy that sets that to unrestricted. So when I go to set an execution policy, then I can choose how I want that applied. Do I want that applied to the machine policy, the user policy, the process, the current user, or the local machine? Now, in this case, this unrestricted is actually set by group policy by our system admins so I really can't overwrite it but if I wanted to change I'm gonna go ahead and change the local machine policy here just so you can see how it works and if you are not on a domain you might not have this if you are on a domain you might have it and it might not be set it would say undefined and so then the local machine policy would take effect so what we'll do is we'll do a set execution policy and I want to set my policy to all signed. And that will change my policy. It will tell me that, um, let me hit yes. It will tell me that it has an issue with it. Windows PowerShell, whoa, that doesn't make it easy to see. Updated your execution policy successfully, but the setting is overridden by basically the machine policy. So now if I do a get execution policy list, you'll see that I did change it. It's just telling me that you're overridden by this. So if you don't have that override, that's how you change your execution policy, which is great. But what are my options for execution policies and uh, which one should I use? Great question. So let's take a look at what our execution policies can be and help. So get help has all of these great great help on commandlets, but it also has a handful of actual help articles, and they all tend to start out with about. So I'm going to do get help. I'm just going to do get help about, and you'll see all of the help files that it has here. So there's one specific for execution policies, and it's get help about underscore execution underscore policy. I think it's plural policies. There we go. Hmm. Let's do that through more to make our life a little easier. One page at a time. So, short description describes the PowerShell execution policies and explains how to manage them. Here's a longer description. And I'm going to go through, and here are my execution policies. So I can do all signed, bypass, default, remote signed, restricted, undefined, unrestricted, and it tells you what each of them me uh, means. So a couple of things I want to point out. We're not going to go over all of them, but I want to point out a couple of things. All signed and remote signed have to do with digital signatures. It means if the script is going to run, it has to be digitally signed. So all signed means that all scripts, including ones you create here on your own computer that you do, have to be digitally signed. If you do not want to have to digitally sign scripts that you create, then you can do remote signed. And what that means is if you create it, it doesn't have to be digitally signed if, if it comes into your system remotely. So you download it from the internet, something like that. Those have to be signed before the system would run. Restricted just blocks it. I uh, notice it's the default execution policy for Windows client computers. Unrestricted says, yep, unsigned scripts can run. So these are your different policies. The right one, that's going to depend on your environment and what you need as far as security and flexibility with your PowerShell scripts.
Okay, so hopefully this gives you an idea of what execution policies are, how they impact whether your scripts can run or not, and how you can adjust them.